Coach, go ahead. All right. Well, just on behalf of our entire team, I want to make sure I uh, thank uh, everyone associated with the All-State Sugar Bowl. Um, it's been a fantastic week. Um, the New Orleans Saints have been uh, have gone out of the way for us, had a great experience there for our guys, had a great experience here in town, and um, we're very grateful to be here and happy to be here. Uh, at the same time, um, we're very excited, most importantly, about the chance to play a great Georgia team. Look forward to representing uh, our team with the way that we play uh, to the best of our abilities. Everyone for us will play. We're excited to play, and it should be a great game. Questions for Coach Roo? Looks like on the left towards the back, Coach. Uh, John Warner, Waco Tribune Hero. Thought I'd get the, this one out of the way early. Have you been contacted by any NFL teams, and do you think it's been a distraction at all this week? Um, I've, I've not been contacted by anybody. Um, but I'm, I mean, it's certainly a distraction in that our guys are answering that instead of talking about the game, which I, I hate. But, um, you know, I was talking to James Lynch yesterday. Like he said, it's part of my job. Um, when our players play well and when they do things like they've done, going from 1-11 and 11 to the Sugar Bowl, um, people are going to take notice of not just me but my staff. I've had guys on my staff offered, you know, D Division One jobs this year, I've head coaching jobs, and uh, we're pretty committed to being at Baylor. It's a wonderful place. And so um, I hate that it's even a storyline for our players, but they've, they've handled it really well and they're used to it. It's been every year it's been that way. We'll stay on the left. Um, towards the center of the room. Yeah, uh, Murray Poole, Bulldog Illustrated. Uh, Coach, uh, describe James Lynch, what makes him a special football player. I know he's Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, All-American first team. And uh, just what uh, kind of guy is this uh, relentless, apparently, on the field? Yes, sir. Um, I think one of the things about James is he's tremendously athletic for a big man. You know, he's you know, 300 pounds, but he, he runs a shuttle like a secondary player. And so uh, it's his, really his quickness that it's allowed him to have the production that he's had. And he's a relentless player, a really smart player. But um, I want to make sure I say this, he's a really, really good athlete too. And you know, most of his sacks come out of a three-man front you know, where he gets double teamed. He has a tremendous ability to change his body angles and, and he, just, he just finds a way to get to the quarterback. And so he makes a ton of plays for us getting the quarterback. He also makes a ton of plays for us in the run game. And that's certainly, when you play a team like Georgia, that's, that's number one is finding a way to stop the run, especially the outside running game. And uh, it'll be really key that he does that. We'll move over on the right side towards the front. Alex Scarborough with ESPN. I, I know you hate this storyline, but given all you've accomplished here and being one play away from, from the playoff, how do you sort of weigh what's left to accomplish versus other opportunities that may exist in the NFL? Oh, talking about for me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I don't, I, to me, it's, every day is an accomplishment for me, right? So. My, my goal in life is, at the end of the day, is really to, to do a good job wherever I'm coaching, but more importantly, to make sure I take care of my family. And, and so I don't think people, the one thing people don't realize is coaches, like, we pick up our families, man. We, 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 we rip them out of their homes. We rip them out of the places that they are. And so sometimes you do that till you get to a point where you find happy, but don't, sometimes you shouldn't mess with happy. And so there's a lot to accomplish at Baylor. And most importantly, it's just each and every year you want to, I want to put together a championship caliber team, you know, and I think we have a chance to be even better next year than we have, we are this year. And um, so I'm, I'm always looking three, four, five years down the line. I, I think we have a chance to be a perennial uh, national contender to be in the top 10 and be in the top five and go to the college football playoff and play in New Year's Six Bowls. And so um, it's just finding a way to, to get those things done. And but at the same time, also doing what's right for my family. That's not, so people hear that and they always think money. It's more like, Where's the right place for them to be? And, and Waco and Baylor have been amazing to my family. Still on the left side, midway back. Uh, Sam Blum with the Dallas Morning News. You're talking about <clears throat> the, uh, I guess, Baylor for the future. Do you think that you'll be back at Baylor next year? Uh, yeah, I, I plan on that. I certainly think I will be. I believe, uh, yeah, we got on the front row on the left. Coach, two questions for you. Uh, one is, uh, what is Jake Fromm's best attribute, and will this be the best defense you have faced this season? Well, um, I think in terms of Jake, you can see a good player who's in, extremely intelligent gets him in the right play. Um, you know, we face a lot of offenses where they they look to the sideline, you know, and then they kind of go back. You know, he's he's a pro style quarterback, and when I say pro style, he's getting him in the right protection, getting him in the right play. And that makes it really difficult on defense because you have to disguise, you have to try to throw him different looks. 
and he's got a big, powerful arm. You know, I mean, he's he's pushed the ball down the field, and um, um, made big plays. He's also uh, athletic within the pocket. Gets outside the pocket, keeps his eyes down the field. So he's a threat in a lot of ways. He's certainly one of the best quarterbacks we faced this year. Um, defensively, this is by far the, the best defense we faced, and uh, that's no disrespect to. Uh, people in our conference. There's a lot of great defenses in our conference, and there's a lot of difficult defenses in our conference. I, just as a fan of college football, I've, I've enjoyed this week just seeing the different styles of team, you know, like just watching, not this week, but this preparation, watching all the different teams in the SEC. And last year we played Vanderbilt. You know, you hear a lot about SEC versus this conference versus that conference. But it's like night and day the styles of football that we see. Really the only Big 12 type team in the SEC that I watched, of the teams that I watched, was really LSU and what they're doing is kind of setting everyone, you know, they're doing it better. But so it'll be interesting just to see the different styles, you know, um, like we're, we're two teams that held each other under 20 points a game and uh, we do it with three down, they do it four down. But, you know, I think Coach Smart's brilliant in what, the, what they're doing. I mean, they play so many different guys on defense. They have different packages. They rotate in and out. I told our guys, our coaches were in their game planning and taking notes. I said, guys, you, you have no idea what they're going to do until the first snap of the game because they do something different every game. And so, um, but yeah, it's certainly one of the best defenses and they've got great, great players. They play hard, they play a lot of guys. It should be a really fun game. And I think it's really cool to see this, the different styles and we'll see what happens. Any further questions for coach? Well, yeah, left side, center of the room, coach. Anthony Dash with UJSports.com. Uh, of course, I'm from the George perspective. So much has been made on the uh, players uh, who are, are not here for the Bulldogs this week. But I was wondering, when you look at film and look at some of the younger kids that they're putting out on the field, how much difference are you seeing from what they normally have out there? And, well, with all, with all due respect to George, George's issue is not having good, having good players. They got good players up and down the board. I mean, they, um, they're fantastic. And I say that with the greatest of respect. Like, I haven't seen a team play as many guys. And I think it's, again, just as a football fan, you can't really kind of do some of the things that they do. We, we, we would be afraid to do some of the things, playing so many different guys on different down distances because of the tempo that we see. You know, teams will go fast against us um, in our league. Um, but they are, they get guys in and out. So they have so many, so many good players. And I think when you come to a bowl game, you understand on both sides, the other team might have had guys be ineligible, might have guys fill drug tests, might have guys not play. You can't worry about who the other team has. You just got to worry about yourself. So we, um, we're we just going to try to identify them by number. And, and the, one of the great things that they do is like Mark Webb, you know, he could be the Sam linebacker in one play. He's the Mike in their next package. So you can't come out there. It's, it's, it's just looking at bodies because they, they move around so much. Still in the left side towards the back. Um, Mike Griffith, AJC Dog Nation. Coach Kirby was talking about the innovative nature of your defensive scheme. How much of that is – based on personnel, and, and can you share some of the philosophy behind what you're doing defensively and how, why and how it's so much different? Yeah, uh, well, I'll start by saying that all of our success really we've had as a team this year uh, comes from the, our, the growth of our defense over the course from last year to this year, and that, that credit rests solely on Phil Snow, our defensive coordinator and his staff. You know, I GA'd for Phil. He's had, a, he's had a top 20 defense going all the way back to Arizona State when they played for the National Championship. He had it at UCLA's. He's just uh, he's been an innovator everywhere he's been, and um, you know we played this three down package when I was with Coach at Temple, um, probably 30 to 40 percent of the games we would play it the last two years, and and um, we got to the end of this past season we lost some got some D linemen to the NFL and we said who are our best players, um, what's our best package we went back and looked and we were in the three down we were just way more successful, and I'll make sure I give a lot of credit to Iowa State who's kind of been the, you know, really started this in the Big 12. And if you watch most teams in the Big 12 now, they've all sort of copied it. And so we took what we already did from three down and we studied Iowa State and we've kind of built on it. And uh, it fits our players really well. You know, Chris Miller is our middle safety and, and um, you know, he's unfortunately he's missed some games because he's a big hitter and he's had some, you know, he's had some illegal hits. But um, he, he gives him a chance to kind of run the middle and he can be in the front, he can be in the middle of the field. So. It uh, it's you it's unique. Now you have to see if you can man you know man up against the the size and the strength of Georgia and the in the downhill running game. So I think it'll be a really cool game uh, from a football perspective, seeing how they attack uh, this defense that maybe they don't see a ton of. But you know if you watch them against LSU, they basically played against LSU what we play. So they played a three three one with a the linebacker behind it. So they certainly have experience in you know seeing it because they did it. Let's move over to the right side in the center. 
Coach Ed Daniels, WGNO in New Orleans. I, I was at the Peach Bowl. Uh, Coach, were you um, shocked that what LSU was able to do to Oklahoma? And when you look at Joe Burrow, if you've studied him at all, have seen enough of him, uh, can you kind of comment on what kind of season do you think he's having? Um, yeah, I mean, I think Joe Burrow's obviously the Heisman Trophy winner, uh, landslide for a reason. Um, I think he's tremendously accurate. I think uh, the wideouts, the wideouts probably don't even, they get a lot of credit, probably don't give enough credit for the amount of, I mean, they were covered quite a bit in that game the other night. And um, their ability to go up and get the football and their competitive nature is is really, really impressive. Just as a guy, because I've watched them on the coaches' tape a little bit because, you know, we played Texas and they had played Texas. Um, I think that they're they're uh, what they're doing is you know really historic so far, and um, um, I think one of the things I like about Joe is he puts people in a real conflict with his ability to to run and keep his eyes down the field, and you saw that in that game the other day. Like you know if he starts to run and people come up, then he finds a way to throw it over top of their heads, and if they stay back, you know he looks looks looks, and he's got a lot of Aaron Rodgers qualities in in that regard. So um, what they've done this year is. Uh, impressive and I probably should have started by saying this but like what a profile and courage and what a as a coach you know um, to see what coach Ensminger did you know going out there and coaching in that game that was um, that was really really special and, and, and at the same time heartbreaking but um, you know, I think Oklahoma is a great team I think Oklahoma just kind of sometimes you have one of those games man where it just hits you before you know it hits you and and you're trying to regroup and get back in it but I, LSU looks like a team that's on a mission and obviously Clemson's been there before, so as a fan, I can't wait to just sit back and watch it on TV. I think the microphone's on the left towards the back. Yeah, Matt, uh, how good has this three-week break been for Charlie Brewer, and uh, what are you seeing from him in practice? Well, I mean, he's practiced really well. I think, um, you know, obviously having some time to kind of regroup, and I think he was. I think just besides being, you know, hit and having the concussion. I think, you know, he's just, he was kind of beat up at the end of the year just from general contact, right? I mean, you know, we ran him a lot against Oklahoma than Texas. So I think, you know, his ankle, his shoulder, his hip, they all feel better. And I think this is a great game for him to develop as a quarterback because you're not going to run around back there and reverse field and all that stuff against these guys. And I've, I've, tried, to, I've tried to, you know, it's one thing to talk about timing and push your quarterbacks to go one, two, three, hitch, throw, check it down. It's another thing when all of a sudden you have these guys rushing you. And so my hope is that um, my hope is that Charlie will uh, take a step as a quarterback, get the ball out of his hand, because that's what you have to do against these guys. We have time for one more question right on the uh, right side. Coach, obviously you talked about wanting to showcase the team when you all played Oklahoma earlier this year on national TV. You have another opportunity to do that in this game. How much did your team maybe learn from that, and how much do you all relish these opportunities on this national primetime stage to showcase the program? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, – gracious. <laughs> I think, um, you know, you go back and look at both Oklahoma games, you know, we're one play away from winning those games, but we didn't make that play. So I don't say that as a loser. I say that like – I think it's always really important to look at, hey, you, you had to make one more play, but we didn't make it. I didn't make it as a coach. I didn't call one better call or – so um, part of it being the first time is that, you know, you, you're, you're learning as you go. And really, when you after the game, you look back and say, you know what, we didn't get it done, but here's where, here's where we can improve. And so, you know, you, I don't think you heard me say, well, you know, I didn't feel sorry for us that we played our third string quarterback, you know, to get to the we played our third string quarterback and he's going to go out there and play well. And and um, so I think for me, those games were great steps for our program. Now, as I told them, like, you know, the last game we played the top number five team in the country and we just lost, right? Well, here we have a chance to go play the number five team in the country again. And um, if we're competitors, if we're tough, if we're the team that we want to be, then we have to go out there and fight them and understand that it, this will probably come down to one play and we've got to make one more play yet again. And so I think our guys have practiced that way. Our guys have trained that way, you know. Um, I want to make sure I say this. I've tried to sound very grateful because I, I am very grateful to be here. Um, and, and it kind of, I read one of the things kind of comes across like I'm saying, hey, we're just happy to be here. We're not happy to be here. You know, we're, we're happy to have a chance to go compete in this game. This, this, is, this is the Sugar Bowl, you know, like this is an opportunity to go out and play a great team in Georgia. I mean, this is a great, great football team. And so that's been here before. So for us, um, 
let's go out there. I expect our guys to go out there and fight, scratch, and claw. And it's no longer about being here. You know, now it's about, hey, let's go win one of these. Let's go find a way to, to make the plays it takes to, to do it, you know. And um, um, so that's, that's where we are as a team. We have to make that next step. Like, we can't, like, we play get in the Big 12 championship game. We give up a missed tackle to CeeDee Lamb for a 80-yard play. And then we kind of play great defense after that. Well, there's no time for that versus these guys. So my, ho my hope is that our program takes a step in this game and we fight, scratch, and claw, get the game down the end, we make one more play than they make, and we find a way to win the game. Coach, thank you for your time. Oh, thank you very much.